Hey, what's up treasure hunters? Today I'm going to go over, finally, my sales from January. So I'm gonna review my notable sales, what I picked those items up for, what caught my eye about them, and how much I sold each for. So let's get into it. So here is the first sale of the year. This is a studio pottery plate and it was done by artist Jim Kemp. And I found that out through one of the Facebook studio pottery identification groups. And it does it is signed right here on the back. Here's a closer look. And I was completely unaware of what this even said but everybody said the style and that signature was Jim Kemp. This caught my eye, just obviously the bright colors and the style of this. Uh, I knew it was Studio Pottery right away. So given that and checking the back and seeing the signature, uh, this thing was priced for only $2. It was a definite buy, even though I didn't know who made it, just given the style and everything, it was a good find. And since this buyer bought two things at once, I am going to show you the overall total at the end. But this is the second item that they bought. And this is a hand-carved Buddhist sculpture, hand-carved out of wood. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, Sukothi or Sukothi, or I'm not really sure. But most likely mid-century, it was in really good condition. And this is only two or three dollars. I tend to pick up this type of Buddhist art and stuff be just because it sells pretty well. Uh, people really tend to like this stuff. And given the price, obviously, I wasn't sure exactly what I could get for it, but I knew it would be within that range that would be worth me making the purchase. So here is what I had the items priced for uh, the wood sculpture. I had a price for 35 bucks and the Jim Kemp Studio Pottery Plate I had for 75. Pretty much a $5 investment total and 110 in revenue. So my next sale here in January was this mid-century needlepoint work of two tigers. You can see the matting is a little bit messed up. Uh, there are some missing pieces and stuff, but overall, this definitely caught my eye right away, given the detail that they were able to get in the Tigers, and it was just a very unique, cool piece. Here's a closer view of those Tigers. And I got this at a Savers. Here's the matting kind of torn away and stuff. I wasn't really concerned with that because this would be easy to reframe or at least remat if they wanted to use the new frame. So that'd be pretty inexpensive. I picked this one up at a Savers for $7.99. And I had it priced for $2.50. And so that's what I ended up selling it for. So my next find here is by Robert Sexton. It's a limited edition lithograph. And he was very good at, it's actually pointillism. And you can tell that just by the little dots. And obviously the closer the dots get, the darker the image turns. This is titled In Our Time and it was numbered here 210 out of 600 and then signed here in the matting R. Sexton. And on the back here was just a little quote and the title of the piece along with the artist. So it was very easy to search anytime. Again, I've said this a million times, but anytime you see something on the back of artwork, whether it's a biography of the artist or a certificate of authenticity, anything like that, it's always good to do a little bit of searching while you're in the store to see if that artist's worth can fetch a good profit. I believe I got this for three or four dollars at a Goodwill. And I ended up selling this piece for $125. Uh, shipping was a little bit expensive because I believe it went out to the west, I think in Idaho or Montana or something. So my next sale was another piece of studio pottery. 
This is by a studio, Coyote Clay. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. They do a lot of Southwest style pottery. And this is just kind of a funky teapot. It was in really good condition, pretty much like new. And here's the mark at the bottom. And I think I was able to decipher this myself, you know, just doing some different searches. I could tell there was a K obviously, and then a T and an E. So I just kind of made a couple different searches and ended up finding out that this was the Coyote clay pottery. And I think they're based out in New Mexico or Arizona or something, but this was only priced at, I don't know, two or three dollars. And seeing that it's a unique piece and handmade and everything, so I just did a little bit of searching on their website and found some other teapots. I don't think I found this exact design, obviously, because it's probably a bit older, but I was able to find some teapots and see what the price was selling new straight from their studio. And that's how I came up with my pricing. So I believe they were selling uh, their teapots for 75 bucks. So I just came under a bit, seeing that it wasn't brand new straight out of the studio and priced it at 60. So that's what I got for that two or three dollar investment. So here is my next piece of studio pottery I found that I sold in January. I picked this up at a secondhand store or an independent thrift store, I guess you would call it. And I got this piece for 50 cents. So even if it turned out to be worthless, no harm done there. But it was a real small vase, kind of abstract. But here you can see that it's signed Reese at the bottom and I had sold a Thomas Reese piece before. Nicer pieces, larger pieces fetch, you know, hundred or a couple hundred dollars. But seeing that this is so small, obviously I wasn't able to charge that, but for 50 cents, it was definitely worth a purchase. So I had this one priced at 40 bucks and that's what I sold it for. I did end up having to pay $18 in shipping because it went all the way out to California and I don't like to take any chances with anything I ship out because dealing with damaged pieces because you try to squeeze it into a real small box to save a couple dollars on shipping just isn't worth the headache. So to continue on with the studio pottery, I, I don't know why I sold a bunch of studio pottery in January, but that's just how it was. Um, this was done by Bill Campbell and I've seen tons of his work at the thrift stores and I usually just buy things that are a little different or more unique. I, I do see a ton of bowls and plates and that type of thing or you know more basic vases. This was um, had his crystalline. He, he's known for using like crystalline glaze and this is a decanter. It had like a glass stopper in there and it was just in perfect condition. There was no damage to it. Here's a top view of the stopper itself. And he's got a pretty recognizable signature of Campbell and then has those two thin circles around it. It was only, it was priced at $2. So uh, especially when his work is priced that low, I tend to pick it up. So I bought this piece for two bucks and sold it on my Etsy store for 40 and shipping again went out to California. So I spent pretty much half the revenue once again, but again, for a $2 investment, I still got about 10 times of that investment. So my next sale here was this vintage medieval style night fireplace tool set. And I picked this up at a Goodwill for five bucks. Obviously it's eye catching, uh, especially it was kind of on the floor, just sitting off to the side. And I didn't even notice it at first. I walked right by it, but when I did a quick circle back, I noticed it. And I seriously thought it was gonna be a lot more than just five bucks, but that's what they had a price for. So I picked that one up. Uh, this was actually in the bottom. It was made in Japan can see that here so it wasn't entirely old but still you know mid to late uh, 20th century it was nice because uh, the top actually screwed off so that helped with the shipping and all of the fireplace tools were already zip tied in the back so I didn't really have to worry about that either but it's a 
pretty cool, unique piece. I just did a quick search and found a bunch of similar items for sale for all over a hundred bucks. So for my $5 investment from Goodwill, I sold this for 200 bucks. It only went to Pennsylvania, so it only cost me you know, less than $20 to ship out there. So it was a really cool find. I honestly contemplated on keeping this piece, but the wife wasn't having it. So on to Etsy it went, and I was happy to sell it. So my next sale here was actually a lamp. Uh, this is a table lamp or end table lamp. And this was done by Wildwood. They made higher end, tons of different styles. This one was very heavy, uh, but it was hand painted with this fl these flowers and uh, in red and gold. It's a really nice overall lamp. Uh, it was in really good condition, even had these green tassels. How I knew it was Wildwood is all the Wildwood lamps have these real nice, uh, I don't even light fix, like the light bulb fixtures. I'll have this Wildwood engraved in them. They're all metal. Uh, a lot of times, cheaper lamps you'll see will have just like those cheap plastic ones. Wildwood is very easy to identify because of that. And the little switch here is also metal. And this is the second Wildwood lamp that I found and sold. They're usually very underpriced at any thrift stores, at least that I've seen so far. I got this one for like $7.99. did take me a while to sell though. That's the only thing is um, lamps, at least in my experience, take a little bit longer to sell. So I ended up selling this vintage Wildwood lamp for 250 bucks and shipping was only $20. So it was a really profitable sale on this one. So my next sale you might recognize from one of my videos from a couple months ago is this uh, gold gilt Chinese cloisonne uh, enamel floral jar. This obviously jumped right out at me given the gold color and then with all the bright flowers and decorations on it. It was in very good condition. The only thing I had to do is the lid was pretty tight so I had to work a little bit to get it to fit correctly but other than that it was in supreme condition this was priced at I think this is five or six bucks I got it from a goodwill definitely one of those things where I didn't even bother looking at comparable items that sold and stuff it was just too pretty of a, a piece to pass up so I ended up selling this one for $105 minus the coupon that I had running. So just under 90 bucks on this and another five star review. So here's an art piece that I sold at the towards the end of the month. And this is a print that was hand signed of downtown Cleveland by Roger Coast. I even contemplated on keeping this just because, you know, I live outside of Cleveland and this is a very cool detailed drawing here it's got kind of a cartoony feel here you can see it's signed and i guess titled in pencil uh, with a copyright in 1981. i picked this up for five bucks at a goodwill and i had it listed for 75 bucks and then minus my coupon so i made 63.75 in revenue off of that it was shipped to a suburb of Cleveland so it didn't really cost me much ship at all. I let that one go because uh, I find Cleveland art all the time so it was a cool piece and I'm sure the buyer uh, will appreciate it. So here's a piece uh, you might recognize from one of my earlier thrift store find videos. This is a vintage slash antique Mexican pottery vase made out of redware. Uh, you can see the clay is red and it's very ornately detailed with flowers and a woman here, birds. It's very cultural looking. Here you can see the top, uh, the redware used, and that's common in Mexican pottery and especially like Southwestern pottery too. The only thing that was wrong with it, it did have a chip here and one over here at the top. Given the age of this, uh, it's not really a huge deal. 
this is how I was able to, I don't know any clue how to say that, but this is how I was able to research this in the store. And I did find some uh, pieces of pottery with that same mark. And I believe that's just the area that this was made. I didn't find any pottery like this with the same shape with the two handles, but I did find some other similar pieces that were all selling for over a hundred bucks, but were a lot smaller than this. I got this for $8 at a Goodwill and I had it listed for $225 minus my 15% off coupon. So $191.25 in revenue. So here my next sale was an antique uh, stoneware jug. I got this at a Goodwill for $8 and it's kind of different just given the overall style with the handle and this uh, small lid here. I'm not an expert or anything in antique stoneware like this. The lid did have some chips to it but it is covered up especially when you look at it in this direction you can't really see any of those chips. This stuff tends to be very collectible and I have sold a decent amount of these antique stoneware pieces. So I listed this piece a little bit under, you know, what I would have normally listed it for just given the damage to the lid. So I had it listed for 70 bucks and again the coupon took off 1050, so I still made 5950 off of this sale. So here's the first piece of glass I sold this year was a vintage Rossini Empoli vase and I've went over this before but you know this is definitely Empoli all the way given the style and this uh, diamond texture here in the glass but it was in excellent condition and still had this uh, vintage made in Italy sticker on the bottom so it's a dead giveaway that it was Empoli and after doing just a little bit of research, I was able to figure out that it was this Rossini Empoli vase. So I tend to find Empoli stuff priced far under what the value is, just given that a lot of times, you know, people pricing things just don't know that you know, it's a mid-century Empoli vase versus just a normal blue vase. So I only paid like two bucks for this piece and I had it listed for 45 bucks after the coupon uh, made me just over $38 in revenue. So it was uh, still a good find and these pieces tend to move fairly quickly. I have sold a bunch of different Empoli stuff uh, over the last couple of years. So my last Etsy sale of January of this year, uh, you might recognize this piece if you viewed my thrift store finds videos over the past couple months is this hand-carved wooden sandpiper sculpture on this brass pole and it's also hand painted it's very well done it was in good condition so i picked up this wooden sandpiper sculpture at goodwill it was priced a lot higher than i initially thought it was going to be at 12.99 usually these are priced five dollars and under the reason why I got it though is because they tend to move really quickly and are pretty easy to sell, especially nice unique ones like this piece. So I only had it listed for maybe a month or two and sold it for 75 bucks minus my 15% off coupon. So it still gave me a revenue of 63.75. So I just had a couple eBay sales over January. I wanted to go over real quick. The first one here, is this antique Victorian uh, marble bust sculpture of this woman in a hat. Let's look at some closer pictures. This I found at a Goodwill and it was priced for 20 bucks. It was very heavy, uh, close to 15 pounds I think, and fairly large. The only issue with it and here you can see is the nose was chipped a bit and maybe the hat like around the rim but that's really not as noticeable as the chip in the nose but everything else looked really good and anytime I see these like hand carved marble sculptures they're always worth a second look most of the time worth purchasing if they're at a good price point and this says I sold it for 199 someone actually offered me 150 for it and I took that 
I actually had this priced for a lot higher, but I think just given the damage to, you know, such a noticeable spot on the sculpture really brought the value down, but it was still a good profit for me to get off that $20 investment. So my next eBay sale was surprisingly another marble sculpture, which I found kind of shortly after the first one I just showed you. And I found it at a completely different Goodwill. This one was only priced for five bucks though. So it was a lot cheaper and it was in a lot better condition, but it was also a lot smaller. And this is just, uh, it looks like a girl with her goat. And you can tell how it's very similar in the style as the other one. So antique Victorian style. But this one's very well done. It's de very detailed and smooth, especially too when you look at sculptures like this. You always want to look at where, you know, if the detail really falls off in certain spots, especially like in the hands and stuff. And this is still very accurate and detailed. Again, I got this piece for five bucks and I ended up selling it on my eBay store for $2.25 plus shipping. So my last sale of vintage items on eBay was this Studio Pottery Bowl. And this was done by Anthony Vix Norris. And he was a Cleveland-based artist, mostly known for his paintings. But surprisingly enough, he did do a little pottery and this is just a very well-made, nice bowl with this yellow to black glaze. But I picked this up. It was, you know, on the bottom shelf at a Goodwill under a bunch of other stuff. I just noticed the edge and a little bit of the glaze. And it was only $2. So I took a shot either way because I knew it was older. And I posted this to one of the Facebook groups I'm part of for Studio Pottery. And somebody was able to help me out with the last name to verify that that, in fact, was the last name. And that's when I found all the information about Anthony. So for my $2 investment, I ended up selling this for 150 bucks. So that's a wrap. That's all I got for you guys today. Appreciate you watching. If you have any questions about any items that I went over or anything else, just leave a comment below or message me on Facebook or just email me. I'll be coming out with another video in the next couple days that go over a lot of auction purchases that I've made in the last couple weeks. I'm actually still waiting for a couple shipments to come in. So hopefully those will get there in time for me to include them because I really haven't found a whole lot at the thrift stores in the past week. There just hasn't been anything that really sparked my interest enough for me to make too many purchases. But that does tend to happen during this time of year and the thrift stores will be full once people start spring cleaning. So keep that in mind to head out there and see if you can find anything that you can flip for a profit. So thanks again. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell so you get notifications when I post videos. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. If you make it out to any thrift stores or flea markets or anything, everything's kind of opening back up. So hopefully you can get out there and find some great treasures. Daddy, what's it?